Welcome to a Friday edition of Sunrise Extra, the big story this morning since we hit the TV airwaves. <laughs> At about 5 o'clock this morning, Brenda, in a waving Rod Hill. Yeah. We'll get the full Rod yeah. Hill here in a moment. You're good, Rod. I know you are the busiest man on the show this morning yeah. because the big story is the weather. Uh, we talked for really over a week now about when rains would arrive mm -hmm. and how much rain we would get. And we really had to end up waiting all week for some significant rain. But boy, did it arrive in some spots overnight, Rod. <laughs> Yeah, these storms really doing what we talked about they could do on our show yesterday, and that has produced big-time downpours with an inch right. of rain or more. We've had reports of nearly two inches of rain come down with some of these storms um, in a period of roughly 30 minutes' time. So wow. that has been impressive. Um, and, of course, you know, you would assume that there could be some issues with the heavy rain that's been coming down. Um, along the west slope of the Cascades and those fire zones and uh, personnel will be out checking those roadways and conditions uh, now that the sun is up this morning. Uh, in terms of the, the big lightning makers, Doppler radar behind me, uh, the chance of lightning decreases as we go through the day, but we'll continue at least the possibility of hearing a rumble of thunder all the way into this evening with more heavy downpours, scattered downpours coming through as we make it through the day. Uh, boy, the early reports from air quality are encouraging. So basically, these storms started in southern Oregon and moved up to the north. So the air quality seems to be improving from south to north. See those moderate dots down south of Salem, the yellow? We've improved into the healthy category for Portland, mm -hmm. and I think it's a likelihood that eventually, by later today at some point, we'll actually see our air quality become moderate. Mm -hmm. And of course, this has been an air quality issue for all areas of Oregon and Washington, but here's the deal, this low that's moving inland, while it may not produce much rain out across eastern Oregon, it is increasing the upper level wind fields statewide. So every single part of the Northwest really ought to be seeing improving, uh, noticeably improving air quality conditions by this evening or certainly into the overnight hours of tonight. So this is just great news. The strong thunderstorms this morning were moving to the north. Uh, we've had reports of hail in Salem overnight. We've had reports of these storms have been reporting the wind gust of 45 miles prior. The bigger story is that torrential downpour rain that we've been seeing. And the rain has been widespread, not only here in our area, but down south, Lane County, over an inch of rain. We've had heavier reports of rain down even farther south across our state. Here is the Futurecast smoke uh, map. And remember the that big dark just suffocating smoke cloud that we've had has been basically the orange to magenta colors notice how that color is gone all areas here we are 10 30 tonight i had a person tell me rod don't oversell this i don't think you can sell it big enough <laughs> look at the blue colors moving into the cascades and out toward the dows that basically means there's no hazardous smoke the air quality should be moderate at least in all those areas this evening and even out toward pendleton you're getting out of the suffocating air and you're seeing improving conditions. And keep in mind, this particular Futurecast air map has been absolutely Johnny on the spot with no exceptions I can think of over the past week. It has really been money for us. So let's believe what it says. The news is good for all areas improving today. Seven day numbers, air quality warnings should be allowed to expire here in the metro area of Portland today. Tomorrow we have some clouds, maybe a few frivolous raindrops, but not much. Fairly dry day. And then Sunday, after some early clouds or fog in the valley, we'll clear out, see beautiful blue skies, and get up to 75. Now, obviously, before I shut up, obviously. No, no, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> we, we, we still have, well, we still have fires burning. Of is, course. There, is there going to be smoke, new smoke put into the air? Absolutely. But not to the magnitude that we had. And keep in mind. The smoke that we're now breaking up, a lot of it just been setting over us from day one right. of the Tuesday after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we break this up, we will never have something so bad to break up again from our current situation. So the news is very positive moving forward. Obviously, people, as you're driving out early this morning, should watch out for some ponding water on area roadways. And I think I mentioned that flood watch for the west slope of the Cascades is now up into this evening, mm -hmm. where there is concern that there's been some debris flows, rocks, boulders, trees down with the gusty storms uh, overnight that we're seeing now and the heavy rains in those areas. Uh, so uh, we don't have information if there's some problems in that area or not, but, but the trump card even there has in fact been the big downpour and rain. I'm out of breath. Back to you. Well, that's okay. You covered a lot of <laughs> really important ground. We have Drive Can 8 is out and about between Oregon City and Canby this morning. Uh, photographer Chad Dehart 
is in maneuvering on those wet roads with the windshield wipers going full blast. You know, I get up way earlier than most people do, but when I hit the roads in the Portland metro area, everything was dry. Actually, Drew, I had to text you this morning. Yeah. I'm like, did it rain at your house? Because everything just looks totally calm here <laughs> in Portland. And boy, did it rain. Um, our viewers are fantastic because you guys were out taking video of what you were seeing in your neighborhoods. And we saw the heavy rain come down. Look at that lightning. Woo! The bolts just streaking across the sky. Listening to that. Listen to that. I did have to scratch my head when you sent me that text this morning. Now, maybe I didn't see it for maybe 10 minutes after you sent it. And I know your schedule. I know you were already at the station when you sent it. But yep. I'm, I'm getting just pounded at my house by rain at that moment. Lightning just crackling over the skies. The thunder is waking the kids up, even the dog. And uh, Brenda <laughs> sends me a text. Hey, is it raining over there by yeah. you? I'm like, yes. Because I get up at 2.15. Yes. When I hit the road at like 2.30, 2.40, nothing. It was completely dry. And so I thought, oh my gosh. Now I'm south of the city. And I know that system rod was moving from the south, right? So I'm sure I saw Look it before you guys. What are you doing? What are you, I know that's a telephone. What are you trying to tell me? Brenda, check radar on the KGW app when you get up in the morning, dear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, she likes to check with me first, and then maybe I, she goes I even to the had app. to. I even texted my boyfriend. He goes, "Don't you have a weather person that you could ask?" I know. I'm like, when you came to bed at like nine something, was it raining? He said, "No, not yet." I want to know the order. Is it me, <laughs> then boyfriend, then weatherman? What you was the order? You were my first go-to. Oh, thank you. you thank you very my much. First go-to. Uh, it really wow. was. I mean, it wow. was pouring. It was just like like just rolling off our house. And I thought to myself, "Is this happening everywhere? How about Oregon City? Actually, not too far from where I live. Ooh. The light." Lightning. I left my house today at uh, 325, got here at 345, and the entire 20 minute drive uh, down Highway 43 into downtown, across I-5, all that good stuff, it was just lit up the whole way with lightning. I mean, every few minutes, maybe no more than two minutes went by without a big streak of lightning across the sky, and really the sky is lighting up with lots Look of that lightning that. in the air. That is an incredible shot. I saw that one earlier this morning on our Sunrise Show. Wow. So much to talk about. So much Shereen ground to cover. Miller Simmons says, um, we did not get the crazy storm in Eagle Creek. Closest to Sandy mm -hmm. um, got text messages from family checking in on all of us. Um, Brittany Marie Chapa says, even my kitties are happily sitting on our back porch despite the rain. We're all welcoming it. It is a, uh, a great sight to see, and if we're going to go full disclosure here, Rod, you mentioned uh, someone asking you not to oversell the rain, kind of improving our air quality. I mean, hey, we're always honest on Sunrise. That was a discussion between you and one of our managers who's always up at this hour and often yeah. will contribute to the stream, Mr. Paul. Uh, and I will say this much, I can't speak for the entire area, but when I stepped outside this morning, as that rain was pouring, and I had to kind of scoot to the car pretty quickly because I did not want to get my hair all messed up. <laughs> um, it was the first time since last Tuesday that I didn't smell smoke. I mean, I smelled rain, like that great yeah. rain smell that you get when it hasn't rained in a long while. And it just uh, stunk like rain and I enjoyed the stink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, let, let me say this, and, and I, I love this about the, the, the manager that we're talking about. He's <laughs> always reminding us, hey, we're not just a Portland TV station. Absolutely. We cover yeah. all the way across Eastern Oregon. And to his point, there are still unhealthy air quality yeah. monitoring sites here in Portland and across much of eastern Oregon. My story is that between now and this evening, every single square inch, for the most part, of our state should see noticeably improving air quality conditions. And that improvement should continue to get better and better going into tomorrow, which is just fabulous news. Yeah, it is. Emily Morse on our stream also says it was a river in the huh. street um, with an awesome lightning show, and she's in Gladstone. Brandon Bachman chiming in this morning saying, hi, Brenda. Hi, Rod. He hey, kinda, Brandon. He left his hellos right there. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Rod. I'm in Houston, Texas for three <laughs> weeks. He says the weather here is hot, 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 and stay safe. Yeah, the weather here this morning, wet, wet, wet. And uh, we have another viewer, Tanya wet, Holding, yeah. saying this was so nice to see this morning. Mm. Uh, the next line from her sounds like the beginning of a, uh, a, a novel. The thunder was loud. And the lightning was bright. <laughs> she <laughs> saw it all go. this morning. Ooh. Yeah, yes. and uh, Carrie Mae yeah. Bushman says, this is some crazy weather. Rain, very welcome, though. Great job, guys. Great job, guys. I can't speak. I guess it's the end of the, the work week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't believe I called the rain stinky, Tara Jones. I just said the rain <laughs> stunk and I liked the stink. <laughs> 
It was awesome this morning to smell that. I mean, honestly, we hadn't smelled that in a long time, and maybe I smelled that the last time it rained around here, but I didn't appreciate the smell of the rain. Um, but it was, um, it was very evident this morning when I walked outside the home. A lot of people watching yeah. this morning. It did develop a little bit uh, more slowly, I'll put it that way, Rod, than maybe we were talking about yeah. this time yeah. yesterday. And I don't think anyone in our yeah. viewing area really saw any sort of moisture until midnight or thereafter. It was, it was right, and we updated. I updated my uh, my KGW Ride Out Facebook page. Um, I don't know about five o'clock or four o'clock yesterday afternoon, saying um, we may not see anything until midnight or after. That turned out to be the case. This big low has been setting offshore, going all the way back to Monday. We've been looking at it, and then, again, initially we thought we'd get a little dab here and there, and then we basically didn't get anything until the low itself started to march uh, inland, which started to happen overnight. And a reminder: if you're watching us on the stream, you're like, I didn't get anything. This has been scattered precipitation, and the storms have been much more widespread um, east of I-5. We haven't seen that much west of I-5, so I realize some of you didn't get a drop. But even if you didn't get a drop at your house, the winds aloft where you are are picking up and increasing as the storm system moves inland. And that's why we think all areas will be seeing the improving uh, air quality during the day today, which is just super duper news. Another comment, Sasha Farrell says, we just moved to Burns and I'm jealous we missed the rain. <laughs> and Mary Ann says, puddle splashing time. That's awesome. Uh, and then about, Jennifer Taft says, yeah. smells like rain and barbecue. Oh, I like those smells. I like both of those smells. Dorothy chimes in, and we've heard this from a few people this morning. Dorothy says, we went out and danced in the storm. Love all the thunderstorms. <laughs> uh, a true KGW Sunrise extra viewer named Stanford Walker. We love Stanford. Stanford. Again, limiting his hellos this morning. Thank you, Brenda Braxton, he says. Thank you, Rod. <laughs> he doesn't like you anymore. <laughs> he used to love me, right? I don't know what I said or did that upset Stanford over the last few months. But uh, he says, hi, Brenda. Hi, Rod. Thank you for the welcomed rain. Thank you for the good news. I do not want to be on Stanford's yeah. bad side. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, um, I have I have Don out in Baker County. I love Baker City. I think that it's valley beautiful. when you drive on I-84 through there is mm -hmm. so beautiful and the historic downtown area. Saying, well, Baker County in general gets some rain. I will tell you, your forecast calls for mostly cloudy skies with the chance of some widely scattered shower activity and maybe an isolated thunderstorm this afternoon. So most of you in Baker County probably will not see rain, but again, you will benefit from the winds picking up aloft and your air quality should be improving going into this evening. Uh, big shout out to Baker County this morning, guys. Yeah, and Don Bartell, my girl, she, we're, we're in the same boat, Chica, I see you. Um, she said, I slept through the entire thing, even wondered if it actually rained really? when I woke up. See, I'm not the only What part of town are you in? Because it was near impossible. I mean, that, the thunder was really <laughs> uh, rocking at our house. And then if, uh, if that woke you up, then you were kept up by the flashes of lightning that, that like literally lit up the rooms yeah. in our house overnight. Um, Sean Harmon has a question. I suppose this is best for you, Rod. And it's sort of kind of the backwards question yeah. that we're hearing most this morning. How do fires, smoke, and heat affect the storms. I think a lot of us are asking, how are these storms gonna affect those three things he mentioned, but he put it backwards. How do the fires, smoke, and heat affect the storms? What do you need to get a storm? You need rising air. What's one way the air can rise? There are several, but one way the air can rise is heat. What do fires produce? Heat. And I talked about this earlier this week several times too. In addition to the heat making the atmosphere more unstable over the fire zone, which you could argue is one reason these biggest thunderstorm clusters have tended to move along the Cascade foothills on the west slope where those big fires are burning. You can make that, that theoretical argument. But also the fact that the smoke is putting so many particulates in the air, that actually helps develop uh, cloudiness and also adds to instability as well. So could you argue that these storms would not have been this big if it weren't for the heat or the fires? You could argue that. And you could also argue that the storms wouldn't have made such a beeline, generally speaking, for that path along uh, eastern Clackamas and Marion counties as well. Good question. And then Denny Axe, I like this. Yes. He says, do you hear the thunder? That's the sound of strength in numbers. Shout out to all the volunteers helping out with the evacuees. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes Brenda and I will look when Rod's oh, yeah. talking and say, hey, do you want to read the next comment or should I? Is that the one you picked Th out? That was, but there's a follow-up to that one too because uh, we have Kat Johnson replying to that remark from Denny with a simple amen. Uh, I love it on the stream when uh, you all start chiming in with each other. You don't even really need us at some point. We kind of get the conversation started <laughs> and you guys can take over from there. This is uh, the shot from 
Sunrise photographer Chad Dehart, he's behind the wheel and he's looking through the windshield wipers this morning. Now, I don't know exactly where Chad is at. Whoa, whoa, there's two people talking, director Brian and producer Rob. How about one of you? Where's it at? <laughs> Down towards Canby. Thank you. For, see, I should recognize that. There's probably a uh, there's like a Burgerville, yeah. I think, about to pop I know, up but here it's hard on the left side. Sometimes when they're moving around, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so we'll continue to check out uh, Clackamas County yeah. this morning, Brenda. Donnie Zavala, um, Rod, I think this is another one for you. Um, says watching our creek yeah. here in Almsville. Will we have any flooding? Mm. Should we be concerned? Mm. Well, I would say that. I haven't seen any reports of any streams getting out of their banks, so to speak. And basically what's happened is these rain, these storms have passed quickly. These smaller creeks have been rising really fast. And then literally within a half an hour of the big storms being gone, the smaller waterways have been receding. So keep an eye on it. But that's been the path. Once you go up, if it's been 15, 20 minutes or 30 at most since the storm has passed, you're probably okay and the waters will be going back down. Hey, Director Brian, I want to show the rain map real quick if we can. I had somebody ask about how much rain did Salem get. Now, these are just specific, mostly airport sites. It shows Eugene since midnight, 79 one hundred. Salem just 29 one hundred. PDX three tenths of an inch of rain. Uh, that basically means all those specific sites was not right in the middle of a passing rainstorm or a passing thunderstorm because we do know that it's, it almost seems like every single big rainstorm that we tracked on radar produced at least a half of an inch of rain if not an inch in about a 20 to 30 minute period has those storms passed um, so again the rain amounts are scattered the heavier amounts seem to be pretty close to those uh, fire zones mm -hmm. along the west slope of the Cascades, which is really good news. Guys. I'm telling you, we are getting a ton of comments on the stream. Melody Baker says, slept through it all in Gresham. Mm. Hubby said it was rocking the travel trailer we're staying in until it's safe to go home in Estacada. Melody, you were probably exhausted. It's no wonder that you slept right through that, but good. I'm glad that you're going to get to go home <laughs> at some point. I often say if that travel trailer is yeah. rocking, <laughs> don't, don't come, come knocking. Jeez <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Louise, uh, Dawn Bartell, you asked, uh, or she mentioned earlier, like you, Brenda, that she slept through the whole thing. I asked, where do you live? She said wow. Tualatin, which I still find amazing because I'm in West Lynn. Our director, Brian Matthews, in Tiger. So Tualatin resting right there between us. Brian saw the lightning. He heard the thunder. I heard it and saw it as well. Dawn said, not nah, missed the whole thing. Uh. The episode went right past her. And Shia Breckenridge, Beaver Creek lost power and um, was up with lightning and thunder all night. Yay for rain. Nobody seems at all no. um, annoyed that they got woken up. They're like, yes, 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 rain. I saw a question here from Gail Gedge, and it's a something, Rod, that we started talking about on that early morning call we do each day at 4 a.m. Uh, Gail says, have you heard yeah. if the rain has helped the fire? Uh, and it's worth talking how, how that works exactly, because is it helping? Sure. Is it going to put them out? No, not that fast. Yeah. No, keep in mind, you know, we don't often get big fires of 100,000 acres on the west slope of the Cascades, but we do, you know, get these 100,000 acre plus fires, mostly grass brush fires across central and eastern Oregon. And whenever they reach, you know, this magnitude, no matter what the weather, they often will burn at least to some degree all the way through October into the 1st of November, literally requiring the, the cooler nights and the cooler days of early fall and the increased rainmakers coming. What this rain will do uh, that has fallen is help quiet the overall fire activity. And with the, the air quality improving, don't forget that's going to improve visibility over these fires as well, which means if the fire uh, fighters choose, they'll be able to do more assaults from the air in the mm. coming week where that had really been shut down because the visibility was so bad. And does it help the firefighters hold the containment lines to continue to build new containment lines around the fires? Absolutely. So again, don't think of it as putting out the fire, but think of it as bring, bringing tremendous help in many, many ways, guys. I like this. One of our regulars, Jennifer Taft, says, Hallelujah from the atheist. Everybody is getting in on the Hallelujah. yay for rain. Do we have a uh, do we have time for a handyman tip of the day? Because oh, we have a, a handy viewer watching Ooh. this morning, Eric with a K, Eric Smith. He says he just cleared out all the gutters at his house yesterday, now thinking that was a great idea on his own part. And he says yeah. we should remind people wow. to check their gutters because they do get blocked very easily. Yeah, that's true. 
Hey guys, real quick, real quick, latest air quality numbers show moderate in Albany, and they now show DEQ parts of mainly North Portland up into Vancouver has improved into the orange or unhealthy for sensitive groups. That's one step above being moderate. And again, I think much of the Willamette Valley by dinner time tonight will be seeing moderate air quality. One more quick question. Rob, this is for you from Gene Kemp. Yeah. Will this afternoon thunderstorm Hi, in Clackamas be as strong as this morning? No, I don't. So there could be some thunderstorms, meaning lightning, obviously, later today, even into this evening. But I don't think we're going to see the big lightning clusters that we had early this morning. I think the chance of just horrendous lightning activity with the one to two inch rain rates coming down, I think that will be over by about 9 a.m., the threat of that this morning, and it will be tamer heavy showers with thunder and lightning potentially later today. I saw that comment from Gene Kemp. I'm wondering if that's the same Gene Kemp who was a long time uh, spokesperson for the Oregon Food Bank. I have to believe it would be. Spelled Gene the same way, spelling Kemp the same way. If that's you, good to hear from you again, Gene Kemp. And Sarah says, Yahoo! Yeah, she's looking forward to seeing the skies again. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there are so many comments. Do we have the authority? Do we have the authority, Brenda and Rod, to oh. blow past the Today Show cut-ins that we have to do on the TV <laughs> channel here in a couple of minutes? Can we keep doing Sunrise Extra? Because I'm actually enjoying this conversation and all these great comments oh. that we're getting today. I'd do it. It's above my pay grade, though. Brenda's in. Rod, what well, do you Drew, think? Drew, you could continue. <laughs> well, I think Brenda and I have to go for the cut-in, but can't we keep Drew up live? Can't we keep you know, you up live? You know, it's just the opposite not, today Drew. because I've got a couple interviews to do and i got to do an Instagram. Yes. But Drew's going to do cut-ins. I have to prepare for my know. television appearance. <clears throat> He's ready for his close-up. Yeah, i got to go, too. <laughs> All right, so uh, why don't we put a wrap on things. Sunrise Extra, it was a great yeah, Friday. Happy Friday. Uh, Friday. We're thanking the rain for the greatness. We'll see you guys on Monday.